Hello and welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today we're going to learn the masters of Renaissance, Lorenzo il Magnifico, the card game published by Cranio Creations. In this game, players represent the citizens of Florence who are trying to increase their fame and prestige. It's basically an engine building game in which players use this marketplace to collect resources then they can use those resources to buy these development cards, which give them victory points immediately, and they give them these production abilities. Players can use these production abilities to produce more resources, and especially this faith, which allows them to move on the faith track and gain additional victory points. To set up the game, first sort these development cards by color, and then by the level of the card. That way, you will end up with these 12 separate decks. Shuffle each deck, place all the cards face up, and now you can tell the level of the card by the number of dots on these banners. Then take this marketplace, place it next to the development cards, and then randomly place 12 marbles into the tray. Place the 13 ones into the reserve, and then place the resources next to the marketplace. Each player will get a player board, Place these three Pope Favor tiles with the inactive side up and then place this Faith marker onto the zero space of the Faith track. Now shuffle this deck of leader cards. Each player will draw four cards, keep two of them and all other cards can be placed back into the box. All players keep their leader cards secret from other players. Randomly determine the starting player who will get this Inkwell token. Then players will take the starting resources based on this small table in the rulebook. When you take a resource, put it into this warehouse depot, and when you take a faith point, move your faith marker one space forward. I will talk about the rules for warehouse depots in a minute. The game is played in rounds, and starting with the first player and continuing in a clockwise direction, each player takes one turn. On your turn, you must perform one of the following three possible actions. You can either use the market to take the resources, or you can use the resources to buy development cards, or you can activate production. When you decide to take the resources, choose one row or one column from the market and then take the corresponding resources from the tray. As indicated in this chart below, purple marbles represent servants, blue ones represent shields, grey ones represent stone and the yellow ones represent coins. The red marble represents faith and white marbles represent nothing. These are like empty spaces. So if I would take this column, I would take two servants and one shield. If I would decide to take the middle row, I take one coin, one stone and one servant. So let's say I choose this middle row, so I take the coin, stone and a servant. I take the resources from the tray and when I'm done, I have to take this 13 marble and slide it in following the arrow depending on the row or a column that I have chosen. Because I chose this middle row, I take the 13 marble slide it in and then it pushes another marble out. This way the market has changed for the next player. If I would choose any column, I would slide the 13 marble following these arrows. Now I need to place the resources into my warehouse. The warehouse is divided into three separate depots and the first depot can only hold one resource, the second can contain two resources but they have to be of the same type, and the third can contain three resources, again, all of them of the same type. In addition, one type of resource can only be stored in one depot, so other depots must store different types of resources. You can rearrange your warehouse anytime you want, so in this case I can move the coin to the second depot and add the second coin. Then I can place these two resources, for example, like this. Every time you take resources from the market and you choose a column or a row, you have to take all the resources from that row or column. So let's say now I choose the servant and two stones. 
When trying to place these resources into my warehouse, I can see that I'm not able to place all of them. I can still store these two stones in the third depot, but the servant exceeds my limits. In that case, you have to discard the resource, and for each discarded resource, your opponents can move their faith marker one space forward on their tracks. The same would apply in this situation, because I have four types of resources, but only three depots, one of those resources must be discarded. It doesn't have to be the one I have just taken. I can decide to remove this servant, keep the shield and keep the stone as well. But for the servant, which is discarded, other players can move their faith markers. When you decide to buy the development card, you can buy one card. The cost of each card is depicted on top of the card. This number indicates the victory points you get from the card. This is the production ability of the card. And the number of dots on these banners indicate the level of the card. So in this case, it's level two. When buying the card, you can spend resources from your warehouse. And later in the game, you will also have resources in this area, which is called a strong box. And you can also use the resources from this area as well. There are three slots on your player board where you can place cards. If the slot is empty, you can only place the level one card into that slot. So for example, for these two coins, I can take this blue level one card. Because it's level one, I can place it into any empty slot. Now, if I would buy any other level one cards, Again, I would only be able to place them into these two empty slots. I can never place a level 1 card on top of another level 1 card. Now, level 2 cards, let's say this one, can only be placed on top of level 1 card. And as you can see, the colors don't have to match. You can never place the level 2 card into an empty slot. It must be placed on top of level 1 card. Similarly, level 3 cards, let's say this one, can only be placed on top of level 2 card. Again, colors don't have to match. When you decide to activate the production, you can activate production abilities on your development cards and also the standard production ability on your player board. You can only activate the abilities which are visible you can never activate a production ability of the card which has already been covered by the card with the higher level. You can activate all of those abilities only one time during one activation and all of those activations are optional. You don't have to do any of those. But when you do, you have to pay resources on the left side of this bracket and then you get resources on the right side. All the production is activated at the same time, so first take the resources from your warehouse or from the strong box if you have any, and place them onto the production abilities. Now it's time to trigger all the activations. In this case, you can get one resource of any type, so let's say I decide to take the servant. Here, for two servants, I will get two shields and two faith which means I can move my faith marker two spaces forward. And here, for one shield, I get another faith point. Now, discard all the resources from the left side of the bracket and move all the new resources into this strong box area, which is unlimited, which means it can hold unlimited number of resources. You can also use these resources when you buy the development cards or when you activate production. On your player board, on the faith track, there are three sections with these dashed borders and each section contains this Pope favor tile. At the end of each section, there's this Pope space. Now, if any player reaches or exceeds that Pope space, the Vatican report is triggered. All players check their position on the faith track, and if the player is within that section, they can flip the Pope favor tile face up. Obviously, the player who triggered this event also flips that tile face up. However, if any player is outside of that section, they need to discard the tile permanently. Since these tiles are now face up, 
they will provide that number of victory points to their owners at the end of the game. Now with that the activation of the first section is over and it will not be triggered anymore by any other player. Each section is activated only one time. Again, when any player reaches the second Pope space, trigger the second Vatican report for the second section. All the players who are within the second section can flip their markers face up and players who are outside of the section have to discard their tokens. The same would apply for the third section as well. Anytime during your turn, in addition to your normal actions, you can also perform a leader action. You can either discard the leader card permanently from the game and gain one faith point, or you can play the leader card, which means you have to meet the requirements and then place the card face up next to your player board. When you do, you now have the special ability for the rest of the game. In order to meet the requirements of this leader card, you have to have at least five shields somewhere on your player board. You don't have to discard those resources, you simply have to have them. To play this kind of card, you would need to have at least two blue cards on your player board and at least one yellow card. When you do, consider all the cards in your player board, not just the ones which are on top in each column. To meet the requirements of this card, you have to have at least one card of each color. And to be able to play this leader card, there is a banner with two dots, which means you have to have at least one purple card of the second level with two dots. All the leader cards give you the victory points at the end of the game and some special power which you can use from now on until the end of the game. These leader cards give you additional production ability these cards provide you two more storage spaces for the particular resource. These leaders change the white marbles into a marbles of a different color and they change all those white marbles. You cannot choose not to use this ability. And these leaders give you a specific discount when you buy development cards. These leader cards provide no special ability, but they give you a lot of victory points. End of the game can be triggered in two ways. First, if any player reaches the last space on the faith track, triggering the third Vatican report and also triggering the end of the game. Or the end of the game is triggered when any player buys the seventh development card. After triggering the end of the game, let's say it was triggered by the red player, all other players in the round until the last player in the player order will play their last turn. That way, all players will play the same number of turns in the game. Then sum up the victory points for all players. First, count up the victory points from all your cards in all slots, visible or not. Then add the victory points from the faith track depending on the position of your faith marker. Add the victory points from the Pope favor tiles if they are flipped face up. And then for each five leftover resources, add one victory point. Finally, add the victory points from the leader cards. Whoever has the most points is the winner. And that's it, that's how you play Lorenzo Il Magnifico, the card game. If you would have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you like the series, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec, you've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.